OK. All right. So in this last installment, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is kind of bring together what we did on day one and day two and kind of bring everything together for this. Now, if you guys remember the first day, I kind of talked about that annuity formula, right? It was kind of complicated, but by putting away money on a week to week basis, we can make a lot of money, correct? Then the next thing we talked about was, what about if we just took 5,200, if you guys remember, that's how much it would be $10 a week for, uh, for a whole year for 10 years. What if we just took that amount of money and actually let's do, um, and we just put it into an account and forgot about it, earning a certain interest rate compounded a certain amount of times, and that formula looked like this. Okay? And I think if you guys remember what we did was the amount of money that we uh, invested was 5200 The interest rate we were going to hypothetically earn was 6%. We was going to be compounded 52 times a year. And um, the number of years we were going to do that was for 10. Right? Now. Um, the problem with the problem with uh, with all this is, you know, how about compounding? Um, what we kind of worked on was with this. Um, what was I actually going to? I kind of forgot my train of thought. Let me think for a second. Let me think for a second. So we learned this. Oh, okay. Well, here's what I'm getting to. So what if we wanted to improve the compounding period? Right. This was for f weekly. But remember we talked about what if we did hourly, daily, right? Minute by by the minute, by the second, right? We could keep on going. And we what we learned is we learned we could also invest by something by E, correct? But the problem that we talked about with E so far is with E, we were only assuming that R had an interest rate, or R was an interest rate of we had an interest rate of what? Of one, no, of like when we talked about E, we learned about E where it was our rate was was a uh, hundred percent. This is how we found out E was using that. We said the interest rate was going to be a hundred percent. But ladies and gentlemen, hundred percent is not really that likely. Do you guys know of anywhere we can earn hundred percent on your money? No. All right, let me ask you this. Let's just think about high interest rates, right? We talked about people like, well, oh, I'm going to save my money for one to two percent a year. Where do you guys see high interest rates as far as borrowing or earning money? Where could you guys see in this? And this would be my activity. This would be my part where I'd say, hey, if you'd want to raise your hand and give me some piece of content, that'd be great. Yes. A bank loan. So depends on if it's a personal bank loan, um, if you have collateral, or if it's a business loan, right? There's a lot of things that adjust um, the ba the the, the loan, the bank loan, as far as what the interest rate they're going to charge, right? What do you guys think is one of maybe the cheaper bank loans that you guys get? It's in the news a lot. A lot of people talk about them. Business loans. They're even cheaper. What are you, what's the cheapest loan that you guys think you can possibly Student probably get? Loans. Student loans are pretty cheap, but usually, typically, guys, the cheapest loan you can get from a bank oh. is a mortgage yeah. for a home. Now, why would the home be the cheapest loan? Right. Well, but think about it. If you don't like, let's say I let's say you want to buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars, right? So you go to bank and say, hey, I'm going to buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Now let's say you never pay the bank back. You never give them any money. They take the house and then they sell the house and get their money back. Correct. Uh -huh. But what if I say you come to me and say, Mr. McLogan, can I buy a hundred? Can you give me a hundred thousand dollars? Sure. You don't pay me back any at all. What? A, I can't go back. You know, the only thing I can do is like sue you, right? I mean, yeah. So I'm kind of stuck. So. The more, um, the more risk for a bank is obviously going to increase the rates, right? And they like having collateral, like as a house. That's why rates are cheaper for something like that. Um, the other thing you guys hear about high rates is like credit cards, right? I mean, think about credit cards. Like that's why credit cards people get in really big double because you have credit cards like 25 percent, twenty one percent, and that's just for borrowing money from the credit card, right? You're literally spending money, not paying your bills. And then the credit card is earning money because you didn't have enough money to spend to pay off your credit card. And you guys can see how a lot of people can get a lot of trouble with that. Okay, so um, nothing like credit cards are bad, but if you're not paying off your credit card, you shouldn't be putting money. If you can't pay off your credit card, you shouldn't be putting money on a credit card. Well, aren't debit cards like credit cards, but it's just that's how much money you have in your bank. Yeah, but like if you have hundred dollars in your bank account, you can only spend hundred dollars. Yeah, you if your credit card says, hey, you can spend ten thousand dollars, then guess what? You can spend ten thousand dollars if you have it or not. So if you just never get a credit card, you can like not go into debt because of that. I mean, that's. You never get a good credit score. You never buy a 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not against credit cards at all, but I'm just saying if you, I'm, I'm against spending money though that you don't have and racking up debt on credit cards. And that's not good because that's gonna be very expensive. Okay, but so let's get into this. So we have, so we created this, we created E. P times E. But the problem was E, e the representative of E was at 100% interest rate. So what we need is a formula that's going to include E or the a different rate because right because we can compound things continuously at a different rate and so what this formula that we're going to use is rate times time all right and again the reason why continuously is so important I've been talking about money hey you have your money in a bank at the end of the month the bank compounds your money right or let's do the end of the day end of the business day the bank compounds your money right but think about this think about like bacteria or viruses like the Zika virus does the Zika virus wait at the end of the day and then say, okay guys, everybody compound? No. no, it's continuously compounding, right? Right? So things in nature continuously compound. That's why this is such a very, very important formula because it represents so many things that we, that we use in real life and, say, and, you know, and it works even with money too. Your money is you know, continuously, depending on your account, it's gonna be work, we want your money to be working for you as much as possible. Um, all right, so, that is our formula. Let's go ahead and compare what would our formula do if we were to compound continuously instead of compound weekly. So what I'd like you guys to do is in your um, calculators is to plug this in and see if you guys can evaluate what this value is going to be. So E is the, is you'd have to hit second LN if you're working with like a TI calculator. Um, if you're using your phone calculator, you can just kind of flip to the side. Um, or you could use, um, you know, Desmos or whatever else if you go ahead and calculate. And I'll get Mike. I'll go back. If you guys remember, this is what we did the first day. I'll recalculate this because I forgot it. Actually, do I have it? Let's see here. That's plus one point zero six. Yeah, I do. Okay. So this value is 9,471.74. And then if you compound it continuously, you're going to get? One anyway. You guys are gonna make me do this? Yep. Bless you. 75, what was the cents? Zero one nine seven. Yeah, let's round it. Let's round the cent up. No bank is going to round the cent up for you, so we'll do it here. So what I want you guys to see is again, if you guys remember day one, what did a lot of people have problems with? They're like, oh well, if you compounded it daily, if you compounded it more, you'd make more money, right? But what we figured out, guys, you're not making that much money. Throughout ten years, you gained an extra four dollars because it was compounded continuously compared to weekly, right? So again, I want to go back and bring everything together. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret to everything that we have learned, it's not your interest rate. It's not how much you compound things. It's not how much money you have, right? The thing that is most important is time. Time, time, okay? So the quicker that you guys can get set up and get something in there to start getting compounded, the better off you're going to be. Rather than chasing interest rates, chasing compounds, and all this kind of thing, Get something in there, it's in a secure account, and get that compounding to work for you. Yes? Yes, I mean, you're getting, we can have a much deeper conversation, but I mean, yes, this would be, this would be up in that alley, okay? All right, so um, that's it, time. Get your money into there in time for the compound interest, all right? Um, I think I'm gonna end it there, and then I'm gonna get into my next, my next lesson, I'll do a different video on. Um, so you can just press the stop start.